Good morning, Ewall. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Hit it. Hit it? Okay. There we go. This is the day the Lord has made. Let See, us rejoice and be thing. glad in it. <laughs> we thank you so much, Ewall, uh, DC, virtual congregation, and all of those who actually stopped by to listen and hear uh, as we share. We, you could have been anywhere else today. You could have logged in anywhere else today. But you chose to be with us, and we thank God for you. Yeah. Well, well, you didn't announce the month of September. I'm hitting it, but I didn't. Really, I, yeah, okay, so. I'm, I'm on a roll. I know if I jumped in too yeah, fast. No, no, we, good. We're doing a double dutch, okay? Yeah. So, um, first off, we want to say happy birthday Six. to all oh. the September babies. Yes, yes. All the September oh. babies, especially <laughs> one here at the table with me. Uh, Pastor Angela will be enjoying her birthday on tomorrow, and we thank God for you. Love you, sweetie. Thank you. Uh, your your next season is going to be one of your best seasons ever, mm. and we'll continue to get better and better. Um, thank you. Thank and to all of you, all of our family out there, if your birthday is in this month, give us a shout out. Uh, I know my brother in love. Uh, yes. His birthday is today. Sure. Um, you said today. Shout, I mean, sorry, Short his birthday. Yeah, it was. Uh, on the 11th. Friday. Yeah. It was, it was Friday. Friday. Yes, yes. Sorry. Uh, Darius and Devin, their birthday is the 16th, I believe. Ooh. So we, we got a few people. If, if I didn't call yours, I, I, it's not because I didn't want to. I just don't know it. So if you have one, pop it up. If you're in the month of September, you know, September. Brittany Pate. Shout out to Brittany Pate. Yeah. Britt, Britt. September love you. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, September babies, they're, they're cool. Um, August was very cool. Yeah. But September, you know. <laughs> We, is over. Uh, yeah, we've we got to move on. It's about, it's about where you're going, not where you've been, right? Okay. Uh, we thank God for you. We thank God for this time. We thank God for um, the season of what he's the season and what he's doing in this season. Yeah. Uh, you may say, Pastor, look around you. Uh, don't know where you've been, but a lot of stuff has been happening around us, and this is not the season. No, there, there's times and seasons. Um, scriptures say that in you know in the end times certain things are going to happen, but we can still have our season yeah, yeah. in this time, because time will look around, but season looks up. Mm -hmm. So we look up to determine our season. Uh, I believe Asaph in Psalm seventy three he said I would have fainted. He said my foot would have slipped until I went to the sanctuary, until I went to the house of God, until I spent time with the Lord and his word, then I understood the end of the wicked. Mm -hmm. He said, I was getting jealous of them. Uh, they were doing all kinds of stuff. They were disregarding God, and they were still, you know, bringing in money. Businesses are going well. They still got their house. They still got their cars. They still got their families. And Asaph was like, you know, I'm kind of feeling a little, you know, heated and shorted, man. Mm -hmm. I'm like, he said, until I went to the house of God. Yeah. See, you have to make sure you... Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, we can't go to the church. That's fine. We're you're assembling assembly. right now yeah, because yeah. you're the church. The church is not mm -hmm. brick and mortar. It's not glass and steel. The church is wherever the spirit resides. You're the church. We're the church. And so you can connect. Yeah. You, 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 can, you, you have a place to belong. You have a place mm -hmm. to call home. You, you're not distant, you're, you're not mm -hmm. uh, disenfranchised, you're not disconnected. Yeah. You are part of the body of Christ. And no matter if you're around the corner or around the world, you can be in Rome, Georgia, or Rome, Italy, Paris, Texas, or Paris, France. It does not matter where you are. But if you're connected to the body of Christ, expect to see great things happening in your life. Yeah. And we received another um, testimony yesterday um, as far as how increase in this season. And so we don't call it, as you know, pandemic anymore. Mm -hmm. Our um, all ministers should want to just mm -hmm. declare a season, a season of goodness. And truly, uh, it's been a season of goodness to us. And, and also just so many testimonies that we're receiving, mm -hmm. even in this. You know, just I was thinking about the Bible when they're talking about the famine and God told one to go and one to stay. Right. And if you're in God, like you said, going to the house of the Lord, mm -hmm. you can still see his goodness mm -hmm. even in this. And if yeah. you're not experiencing his goodness, I say just go deeper in God and yeah. you shall see yeah. the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. Just open your eyes and you will mm -hmm. see. You will see. You don't Right now you can't see the angels all around you. Keep, just look again. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, before we step into too much stuff, we're in okay. for the prayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah, right now, okay. Over here now. Okay. Okay. Here we go. I ask you to bow your heads for a moment of prayer. Father, we thank you today for these, your precious sheep. We thank you, Father God, for your atmosphere adjusters. We thank you, Lord, for your world changers. We thank you, Father God, for these people, your children, your your that are going to show light into this world, that will change the very atmosphere they enter, because you live on the inside of them. We pray today that they will receive a word. We pray today that they will receive, Father God, instructions, guidance, direction, uh, uh, answers for questions that they may have, healing for their body and their mind. We, we declare that they receive advancement, promotion, increase in every area of their life. We declare that their ears are anointed to hear your word and their heart is good ground to receive your word. We ask that you Speak through our vocal cords and think through our minds, none of us and all of you. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And those that agree with that, say amen. 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 Well, let's get ready for this word. Praise God. Let's get ready for the word. Amen. Transform life. Cool. Okay. Right. See you in a little bit. See you in a little bit. Sign off. Hey, you're out. Well, we'll say this. You know, we're talking about announcements. Well, guys, today, after a service, we are taking our baby son. Baby? Yeah. yeah, I know he don't like to say baby. No, <laughs> he's 18 now, but baby will be leaving starting college um, Tuesday and um, the sports academy on Monday. So we're taking him immediately after this, and that's the last one in the house. But I want to encourage someone. Mm -hmm. Someone oh, yeah. looked at us and said, "Oh, empty nesters." And I said, "We'll call it em em empty, em empty, empty nesters. nesters." A lot of people look mm -hmm. at it as such a, such a like, "Oh." Mm -hmm. I said, "Obviously, you don't know your spouse." Yeah. Um, so I want to let y'all know we are so. Um, excited for him mm -hmm. and we're excited for ourselves too mm -hmm. before the children came it was me and him yep and now it i mean that time and i want to encourage someone also with your children as they're they're growing up enjoy 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 every this season. time every season mm -hmm. even the little quirky things they do or sounds they make or whatever you can't wait till they stop it mm -hmm. however we was thinking today it was a song my son used to sing when he was like fifth grade yeah he make up songs yeah. and it was so annoying i mean so annoying <laughs> at times i'm like oh my gosh but i wouldn't dare tell him to be quiet but it's like hey calm down just a little bit blah 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 and so my husband this morning started singing that song and i said you know what i missed the song so and i heard people tell me as you know before you know it, they're gonna be this age that you enjoy enjoy and i really didn't get it and i could tell you i got it today mm -hmm. but i just encourage everyone i know i didn't listen um they said before you know it your daughter's gonna be in kindergarten before i knew it she was in kindergarten but just mm -hmm. enjoy that season but still enjoy the season that yeah. you're gonna have as i call it teenagers mm -hmm. uh, uh our um, spiritual daughter told me this well you look like a teenager and so but the thing about it what i'm saying is you can just enjoy life no matter what season age you're in see teenagers mm -hmm. didn't have anything to worry about they just went and, and came back home and worry about bills and all that stuff right. but you know when you have this time alone together again enjoy enjoy it it's good yeah it's, it's good it's, it's, it's yeah. good so because um we're well, actually in a in the middle of a couple of seasons yeah, because we're, middle, we, yeah. we have our youngest leaving and at the same time we're still grandparents yeah so yeah. And, oh and by the way happy grandparents day oh, yes, to all you grandparents good. out there all you ggs and pop pops and meemaws and honeys and papa bears and honey bears and all you out there that carry that title nanas and yeah. and pat paps and all of them god bless you we appreciate you we thank god for you oh i thought you were gonna say something else but go no, ahead go you, ahead you, okay you that's it? it that's it that's yeah. all you have that's all right. it well cool i'll check you later all right okay <laughs> all right good people we, we thank god for where we are right now uh we thank god for what he's doing in this hour we are still yes i'll say it we are still dealing with living the transformed life because that is what you'll be doing until the Lord returns, is living the transformed life. Now, I'm not saying we'll still be on that same topic, but I'm saying that's where we are right now. Uh, and I've said this before, and I'll share it again. There are times I'd like to say, okay, well, we, we dealt with that for a while, so we can shift off. And the Lord's like, we need to, you, you stay here. So it's like, I, I have to be like the children of Israel. When the cloud moves, I move. Uh, if the cloud stays, I stay. I can't follow the crowd. I got to follow the cloud. So I got to stay right where he, if he's not moving, I got to sit right on here because a lot of times when we're in those kind of um, 
topics and teachings, God is still teaching me some things. God is showing me some things. God is, is giving revelation and understanding on how to take his word, break it down, and make sure viewers like you um, can absorb it. And when you absorb it, that way you can take it and share it. it, it it's like the uh, um, Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And it's like you, you tried some fruit. Uh, and, and like some peaches, man, they're so sweet, man. This is like man, it tastes, or, or grapes. Uh, my my wife has a taste for these. Um, now they call them. They used to call them when they first came out. They were called moon drop grapes, and they're these black grapes, and they're like almost like cylinder shape. They're not round. They're not oval. They're almost like a cylinder, long cylinder, and they come in clusters, and uh, they're seasonal. So you, you can't get these every you know year round. But when they come, I try to make sure I box them for her. And they are, have such the sweetest taste. And she's like, oh, my God, you have to taste these. And, and that's what it's like when you're in the Word. And that's what it's like when you experience uh, Christ for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's like when you develop and build a relationship. Because sometimes people will say, man, I, <clears throat> I just don't get church. And <clears throat> that Bible just, I don't know, man. And you got to say, okay, well, you, you, you tasted some grapes, but you didn't taste the right kind of grapes. Uh, or, or what you tasted wasn't sweet, uh, so I want you to try these. Okay, I'm not. I'm not trying to. Don't try, don't try to push it down my throat. Don't be trying to. No, I'm not. I'm just offering it to you. You take a bite and then you tell me. You you have to experience this for yourself. You can't go by what somebody told you. Uh, I know a lot of times we do on some things, but there are some things you have to have a one-on-one -on -one encounter with Christ yourself. You're gonna hear some people say that Christ is awesome. You're gonna hear some people say, "What well, man? He didn't come through for me." Regardless of what you may have heard, you've got to experience him for yourself. And you have to experience him in the light of it may go against your flesh. It may go against your emotions. It may go against what you thought was uh, what you always thought and always were taught. It may go against a lot of those things. But you have to get to a place where you have to say, God, I want to know you and know who you are. Not based on not based on anything that I thought I knew. Because if you continue to flow in God, there's stuff you thought you knew, you didn't know. That stuff, you if you actually spend time, continue to spend time in the Word, continue to spend time in prayer, continue to spend time meditating on the Word of God, and spending time with God, some things will be revealed to you that you thought was, boom, that's dead on, that don't move. And you begin to read and understand the Word, you say, whoa, I, I didn't see that right. And that's part of transformation, too. Being able to admit, I did not see this right. Uh, we're going to get into the scripture, but when, Peter's, when Peter went to Cornelius' house, before Peter went to Cornelius' house, Peter thought that only Jews could be saved until the Lord had, until he had a, an, an encounter with the Lord. And the Lord told him, don't call what I've met, created common or unclean. And when he began to preach and teach at Cornelius' house, where the Bible said that Cornelius was Italian, he was he was non-Jew, non-Jewish, non-Jewish speaking, non-Jew. <clears throat> and the Bible said that when Peter and his Jewish friends went to Cornelius' house and he began to speak the word, the Bible said the spirit fell on the house and everyone in it. And they began to speak in other tongues just as they did on the day of Pentecost. And they said these words, wow, it fell on them like it fell on us. We go with them and us. We kind of split ourselves. And that's, that's, where, that's another story for another time. But a lot of times we, we, we try to put ourselves in, on different levels. And in God, you're his, you're his creation. And when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you become his son or daughter. And that's, that's your level, son or daughter. That's it, son or daughter. Or I put, I'll give you this. You're a son or daughter flowing in the office of a servant. Because he will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. He will not say, well done, thou good and faithful pastor, bishop, uh, uh, archbishop, uh, right reverend doctor, uh, evangelist, none of that. He will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. All those other things are offices that you carry and operate in as a servant. I operate, as a I operate in the office of a husband as a servant. I operate in the office of a father as a as a servant, I operate in the office of a son or a brother as a servant. So if we keep things in perspective, walking, and these are things that are revealed to you uh, in your walk with God, in, in your walk with Christ, 
and this is how you're transformed. This is how you're transformed because you're you're walking, you're being taught. Uh, don't feel too good. Don't sign up, but I'm I'm hanging in there. I'm not moving. I'm I'm not getting off of this until I get everything that you have for me. And, and you do that, and you will see transformation take place in every area of your life. It may not take place, boom, day one on everything, but you will see little things change in every area of your life. May you may you may camp out. As far as transforming, you may camp out on right thinking. Just, just sit right there. We're not, we're not gonna deal with the healing part right there. God just may be just dealing with you on right thinking. Because he said, if I can get you to think right, then that thinking will change to right believing, which will change to right speaking. But we, we, we're getting ahead of ourselves, so let's just slow down here. <clears throat> we, we talked about how um, the year old heartbeat of 2020 is celebrating his promises and how 1 Corinthians 1 and 20 says all those precious promises are yes and amen in him. There's nothing that is rejected. There's nothing that is denied. There is nothing that is cut off or blocked from, he through, from heaven's supply. If you are in with Christ, if you're in with Christ, there's nothing denied to you. Nothing. And I know a lot of times I hear, hear people say that and I know is an answer too. But this says yes and amen. So this says yes and so be it. There, yeah, there, there are things that I have to walk in and there's things I have to do. And there's things that, yeah. But as long as it says if I'm in Christ, there are, if, I, if, I make, if this makes sense, there are no no's. <laughs> okay, I say, what is it, Pastor? What is that? Yeah, there are there are no rejections, no denials, no 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 vetoes. No, no. If I'm in Christ and heaven and it, and it is, it's in heaven's arsenal, it's mine and it's yours. Second Corinthians five seventeen says, "If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or a new creation. Old things are passed away; behold, all things become new." So we're getting to our foundations now, and. That's one of our foundation scriptures. The other one is Romans 12 and 2. Don't conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. One translation says this. It says, you know, like don't be pushed or shaped or squashed into a mold, but be changed by the way you think. And that's the thing, man. We can get, the, we can get our thought processes together. So much stuff we can avoid. If we can get how we think and how we, how we calculate and how we figure things out, if we get that to line up with God and his word, if we get that to line up with the teachings of Christ, if we get that to line up with the examples that he's given and how the Holy Spirit uh, deals with us, a lot of things we can avoid. A lot of things, uh, there's a lot of things we would navigate around if we make sure our, our thinking is lined up with God and his word. Now, let's go. Last week we talked about transformation, what it requires. Man, a couple of things. Transformation requires observation. Are you seeing what you what you're speaking? If you're not seeing what you're speaking, you, get, you first of all, don't give up hope. Second of all, make sure what you're speaking is what God has given you to speak. That's the other the other part. Transformation requires speaking only what God tells you to speak. You only want to speak what God tells you to speak if you only want to see what God wants you to see. If you want to see God the results, speak what God tells you to speak. That other stuff is only going to show you all the God. Man, I'm tired of this. I'm so sick of you. And you, you're so ignorant. And both, all that other stuff is going to show you everything else. It's not going to show you what God or his plans for your life or for that situation. So... I want to see what God sees. I want to see what God. Um, I want to see what God has for me. So I got to speak what God is speaking. Now this week, wow! This week, transformation. I'll give you the top one. Transformation requires that we are committing. Transformation requires committing to the call. Committing to the call. And this, good people, is coming from John or Saint John. Chapter 6, we're going to start with verse 53. St. John chapter 6, we're going to start with verse 53. And this is, this is 
an amazing thing. Uh, I know sometimes people hear committing to the call, um, and a lot of times we think committing to the call, we're thinking, okay, he's called in the ministry, or, or, or she's called to, no, com committing to the call, co answering the declaration or answering the alarm or answering the warning or answering what has been put, put there, you have to commit to doing that. If you're a fireman, that's just one area. There's many others, EMT, nurses, doctors, people, people on call, emergencies, first responders. If you're a first responder, you have to, you are committed to that call, especially if it's on, and sometimes it doesn't have to be your shift. You can say, look, man, I just pulled a double, I'm leaving. No, no, you're committed to that. So you may be tired, but you haven't walked out the door yet. You just had triage come in. So you're, you're going to do whatever it takes for that life to try to save that life. You're going to do whatever is required. Why? Because you're committed to that call. You're committed to that call of, of being a nurse. You're committed to that call of being a doctor. You're committed to that call uh, of EMT. You're committed to the call. You're committed to the call of being a fireman, a policeman. You're committed to that call. You're committed to the call of being a teacher. You know, you're like, I, I got these papers I got to finish grading, and you know what, I'm tired. They don't know what kind of week I had. It doesn't matter. You're committed to that. No, I told them I would have this stuff for them first thing in the morning. So I'm going to stay up late tonight. There have been many times, many times, many, many times. Many times. Did I say many times? Many times. All right. Pastor Angelo has, has, has had a lot of things that needed to be taken care of. And there's been times that because I'm committed to her, I've been pulled into the area of education. So I will help what you need me to do, what needs to be taken care of, what needs to be done. We need to re re redo this, redo that, retype this, uh, rescan re that. We'll do what we need to do. And there are times I'll say, babe, it's three in the morning. You need to go to bed. No, I'll be there in a little bit. I got to finish this. There are times you're committed. You're, where's your commitment? Mm. So transformation requires co being committed to the call. Okay, here we go. John chapter 6, verse 43. And I will be reading to you from Amplified Classic. Because there's some things in it I want to bring out. Okay, Jesus says this, verse 53. And Jesus said to them, I assure you, most solemnly, I tell you, you cannot have any life in you unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. Unless you appropriate his life and the saving merit of his blood. It's saying that here, verse 54. He who feeds on going on my flesh and drinks my blood has possessed, has possesses now eternal life. And I will raise him up from the dead in the last day. Okay, now Jesus was dealing with the disciples. He was he had been teaching. He had been um, if you if you follow along on, on scriptures prior to this. It was the feeding of the 5,000. It was, it was just uh, different things he had been, he had been dealing with. He, 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 he fed the 5,000. He, he walked on the water. He, he, he said that he is the bread of heaven. And, and he's still expounding on this. He's still talking to them about this. Um, and, he, and, he sit, and he begins to teach. Now get this. He, he's, he's taught this to the crowds. He's told people, many people this. But this section right here, yeah, it's almost like he's shifting from speaking to everyone and he'll begin to just speak to those who say they follow him. Now, there are some people who go to church. There are some people who belong to the church. There are some people who go to church and church goers and there are some people who believe they are the church. And there are some people who, you know, we have to get this scale of what do you think? Years ago in Ohio, my wife and I, we had, um, we were talking to some people in outreach. And the Lord hit me with a question. He said, you asked this question. He said, what is church to you? And what should it be? Well, everybody knows what church is. He said, no. What is church to you? And then you ask the question, what should it be? Meaning what? Meaning that there are people that think they know church. 
Just like people who think they know Jesus and people who think they know what faithfulness is. Faithfulness doesn't mean you're in that doorstep every time the lights are turned on. Because I know people who have done it religiously, because they're like the Pharisees. They'll be there every time the lights turn on, but they're still full with bitterness. They're, they're still filled with malice. Uh, they're still filled with, with uh, they're still carnal. It's an amazing thing. Because the Bible says to be to have spirit, spiritually minded is peace. Be carnally minded is death. Spiritually minded, spiritual minded is life and peace. Get this. There are some things even Jesus shared, he, he told Peter. And all the things that Peter experienced and all the things that Peter had saw and all the things that we're going to get into some stuff, but all the things that Jesus had shared with him. He said, there's some things I want to share with you, but I can't right now because you can't hear it. Yeah, I can hear I'm standing right now. I'm sitting here with you right now. What do you mean? I can't hear it. I can, you can't hear it right now. You won't be able to comprehend what I'm saying. You won't be able to understand the words that are coming out of my mouth. You won't be able to catch this because you're missing an element. You're missing something. And because you're missing that part, you won't be able to comp fully comprehend this. Okay, Jesus, I'm telling you, I, I can do it. I can do it. And a lot of times that's what we'll say. We'll say we can do it. And we'll be there um, um, because it sounds good and, and we're on fire and our emotions are high and we got a zeal. But Jesus is talking to these people and he says, unless you can eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will have, part of the, you will have no part of the kingdom. Except you can do these things. I'll read it to you from the New Living Trans. I'll read it from the New Living Trans. New, New King James Version, sorry. He says this. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I am them. As the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. Jesus said, okay, I got a lot of followers. Some of y'all just follow me for the lows. I got a lot of people coming. You're just coming because you're getting prayer and your needs are being met. I got some coming. You're coming because you're being healed and your house is being changed. And you're like, oh, the church is blessing me and I just, it, it just it's an awesome thing. Now, Jesus comes to him and he says, that's all good. He said, but I want you to go deeper. Remember my pastor saying like this one time, I'm raising the stakes. What do you mean? It's like in poker. You know, you know I'm a $2 man, a $5 man. He said, okay, I'm all in. $50,000. Ooh, that's half of me. I ain't doing that. That's too rich for my blood. Jesus is telling them, unless you can commit to an intimate relationship with me. This is what he means. This is what we talk about when we talk about taking communion. It's the, the, the bread and the cup. It's the, 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 the flesh is the bread. The wine is his blood. This is all representation. This is all, you know, he said, if we do these things, as often as we do this, we'll be in remembrance of the sacrifice that he made. We'll be in remembrance. We'll, we'll remember what took place on Calvary. We'll, we, we'll, we'll remember what took place in the tomb. We will remember what took place after the tomb. He said, this, this, this drink and this bread. He said, if my, my flesh is blood, my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And he's talking to these, he's talking to them. And I got to hit you with this. <laughs> Transformation requires understanding that committing to an intimate relationship with him is the only way true transformation takes place. Transformation requires understanding that committing to an intimate, what's intimate, Pastor? Intimate is personal and private. If you want it, the simple is simple. Intimate is personal and private. Meaning what? If you look over in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, you know, when you pray, don't be like the Pharisees. Don't stand on the corner and let everybody know you're praying. I, I need y'all to see what I'm doing. I am a deep spiritual man. I am praying. I am doing all these things. He said, when you pray, go in your closet. Shut the door. But if I do that, nobody will see me. Somebody will. He said, because what you do in your secret, your father, your father sees what you do in secret, and he'll reward you openly. You don't have to be like the Pharisee. I, I pray three times a day. 
and I fast on, and I fast every week, and I give a tithe on everything I have, whether it's a piece of lint or a million dollar check. I do it all. That's all outward, and that's all, and that all sounds noble, but it's not scriptural. A lot of stuff we hear in church, it sounds good, but is it biblical? Is it according to scripture? And Jesus said to them, and, and, and let me get this part. Oh, man, <clears throat> I'll say it again. Transformation requires understanding that committing to an intimate relationship with him is the only way true transformation can take place. Yeah. You cannot have transformation in your life without having an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. It is not possible. You have to have a relationship with Christ. And then verse 54 says this, who feed, who, he who feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood possesses eternal life now. And I'll raise them up in the last day. You won't, you won't have to wait to get to heaven to have eternal life. You won't have to wait to get to heaven to experience life. If you have an intimate relationship with God, with Jesus now, he said you, have, you possess life now. And I'll read it again. Verse 54 says, he who feeds. That word feeds is an S, ongoing. It means ongoing. If you have an ongoing, now, you start out with an intimate relationship with him. That's the start. That's the 2 Corinthians 5, 17. But the Romans 12 and 2 is the ongoing. I got to keep this relationship open. You know, I got to keep this relationship going. I got to keep the lines of communication open. Jesus may say something that may offend me. I can't cut up. I ain't talking to him no more. Y'all know how, we, you know how sometimes people, you know, you do, you do your friends, friends, and they say something you didn't care for or it kind of rubs you the wrong way. So you don't respond to no text. You don't respond to no emojis. You don't, you don't call. But they, they done a call and left four messages all week. And you're not, I'm not, mm -mm, I'm just, whoo, she got nerve. And you're not going to talk to him. Why? Why are you not talking to him? All because they said, you know, well, as you asked their, here they, <laughs> you asked them and they told you the truth and you got mad at the truth and you don't want to hear the truth anymore. It's an amazing thing how we react. The nature of a human being. We ask you your opinion and then we get offended when you, when you give us the response. You ask. So I told you. And you know what? You cut off lines with, with, with people. You cut off lines with family. You cut off lines with coworkers. You cut, you're just cutting lines left and right. And you get in that habit. If you see something in the word you don't care for, you cut through that. You see something in the word that makes you uncomfortable, you, you slice through that. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't deal with that scripture. You try to treat the word like Swiss cheese. You just check, check out certain sections you want. You have to take the whole scripture. You have to take all of the word. All the word that applies to you as a believer. I'm not saying the one, you know, some people say, yeah, you rightly, that's why it's called rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly divide. Is this about me? Is this for me? What was the time and what was the place and what was the nature of the, of the conversation? No, it's God's people that are dealing with the Jews right then. That's not me right now. Okay, cool. What is he saying here? He says here to be, a, <laughs> to have an intimate relationship with me, if you continue to feed on me, ongoing, he said, you possess life now. Transformation requires an ongoing relationship. With Jesus Christ. And then he explains it to him in verse 55. He says, for, you know, my flesh is true, genuine food. My blood is true, genuine drink. He said, he who feeds on my flesh and drinks, it says, dwells continually with me. And I dwell continually with them. So there is intimacy. Communion is a reflection of the intimacy that you share with Jesus Christ. The bread, the cup. You receive, you take it in, and now he's one with you, you're one with him. And so he's saying, if I'm one with you and you're one with me and I dwell in you continually and you dwell in me continually, then the thing that I need to share with you won't cause you to break and run. Here we go. Verse, verse 57, he said, just as the living father sent me and I live by or through or because of the father, even so, whoever continues to feed on me, whoever takes me for his food, and his, his, I love this translation. It says, whoever takes me as his food and is nourished by me, I shall in turn live through and because of me. 
he says this, if you're nourished by me, I live in you. If you're nourished by me, you'll have the strength and stamina that you need to carry out any assignment that you've been given. It's an amazing thing. Um, you can go for a while without eating, but it will affect you. When they say you need nourishment, that word means you need something that's going to affect the body in a positive way for you to do the tasks that are at tasks that are at hand. You need nourishment. If a child is undernourished, a child is weak. If a child is undernourished, a child can't concentrate. You can't concentrate if you're hungry. You get caught in your emotions when you're hungry. Oh, excuse me, when you get hangry. That's hungry with angry. You know, y'all know how I get when I get hungry. You get angry, you get headaches, you get short, you get quiet, you get whatever you get, but all of that is circled around food. And Jesus said, how much more so should you be affected by me dwelling in you and you dwelling in me? There are things that Jesus is saying that if I'm in you, I'll nourish you for everything that you need to do. I'll affect you in a positive way. And, and one scripture, when he was dealing with Satan, he says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every word. He said, my words that I give you are life. My words are spirit. My words will change things in you. My words will change you. My words will transform you. He said, you hold fast to this word. The words I speak to you, hold fast to those before you opt to grab a plate. No, I'm not saying yeah, eat, eat your chicken, eat, eat your ribs, eat, eat whatever you want to eat. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying don't value your stomach more than you value, value your relationship with Christ. All right, let's, 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 let's keep going. We're going to try to get to this. Verse 58, he says, this is the bread that came down from heaven. It is not like the manna which your, our fathers ate and yet died. He who takes this bread for his food shall live forever. He said these things in a synagogue while he was teaching at Capernaum. I wanted to bring that part out. He said, the bread that I'm talking about, I'm the bread of heaven. He said, I'm the bread. I'm not like the bread that came down when our, and our, our forefathers were in the wilderness. He said, because they ate that bread sustained them, but it only sustained them that bread was only able to sustain them physically and only to a certain point. He said, if you eat this bread that I am, he said, my bread will sustain you from this life and to the life to come. He said, this, this bread will keep you forever. This will keep you on this side of the heaven and on that side of heaven. This bread has no expiration. This bread has no limits. And, and, it's, it's, and here it is. He said this in the synagogue at Capernaum. Well, why is that such a big thing? Because he didn't say it in private. He said it at the church. He said it at the place of worship where everyone could hear. And anybody sitting in the audience could hear. And he even said it where his disciples could hear. And here's where, they, here's where it gets sticky. Verse 60. It says, and when his disciples heard this, it didn't say when the visitors heard this. It didn't say when the parking lot ministry heard this. It didn't say when our serial guests heard this. It didn't say when a guy who just happened to, oh, man, I was trying to find the other church. I'm in the wrong place. I'll just sit, sit and hear what you got to say. It didn't say any of that. It says when his disciples. Now, I want you to understand what this means. They, when this word says disciples, this is not the original 12. Well, how do you know that? Because you're going to see this further down the line. These disciples were the ones that said, hey, I hear what you're saying. You've changed my life. I'm following you. Disciple just means disciplined one or learned, learned one. I'm learning from this person here, and I'm following him. Disciples don't just mean they saved. Because back in the day, Socrates had disciples. Aristotle had disciples. We had certain people who just had disciples. John had disciples. But, but John was not the promise. So he had followers that were listening to his teachings and they were committed to him. We're committed to your teachings. We're committed, committed to following you. But it says when the disciples, when his, when his Jesus' disciples 
heard this, many of them said, this is a hard and difficult and strange saying. An offensive and unbearable message. Who can stand to hear it? Who can be expected to listen to, the, to such teaching? This is what Scripture said. Now let me give you this. Transformation requires dwelling in Jesus to be able to accept the seemingly, I said seemingly, hard, strange, and difficult teachings or words that come from heaven. I'll say it again. Transformation requires dwelling in Jesus. Why well, I got to dwell in Jesus? So you'll be able to accept the, 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 the words that seem hard, strange, and difficult. He said, I'm, 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 I am i got to let Jesus dwell in me. So when I hear my pastor say things like, I told my pastor, look, my son is doing this, my son is doing that. He said, the Lord is saying, continue to declare over your son that he's a man of God. Man, I told you what he's doing. The more I say, oh, you tell me I'm tell him he's a man of God, and I just told you we just got him out of a drug program. Yeah, continue to speak life over him. And the thing that bothers you is that that's the same thing the Holy Spirit already told you, but you went to pick your pastor and he said the same thing. So you're like, man, who can do this? This is this is hard. This is difficult. This, this man, this is hard to do. I'll tell you this now. It's an amazing thing how a lot of hard things will do. Oh, this is, this is an investment. This is this is an investment means this is I gotta do this for my kids, I gotta do this for my wife, uh, my, my husband, we, we're relying on this, I gotta do this. But when God says something like forgive him or forgive her, you're like, you don't know what she did. God's like, I've been here before you got here. How do you know I don't know what she did? I, I see the whole thing. But he's telling you to commit to him. He said, I want you to rise above religion. And walk in relationship with me. He said, I want you to get away from, don't allow the fact that you were here every Sunday for morning and evening service for the past 15 years. He said, do not allow that to be your mark as saying, I am saved. I am delivered. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. Because you're minimized the relationship that you could have because you'll begin to get in, it'll begin to become work-based for you. And if it's work-based, pride could get in there somewhere because you say, look what I've done. Look at all the things I've accomplished. I've been here every Sunday. I've been here three times a week. I come and clean the church. I back, look, I, I clean up. I look, I blow off the leaves on the, on the property. I'm the one to do all that. And pastor say, we thank everyone. Everyone didn't do it. It was me. So, whoa, 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 whoa. Why'd you do it? What was your relationship? What, what was the meaning of doing it? I, I mean, I've heard, my, my wife and I, we've heard people say that, well, the Lord told me to do this. And the Lord told me to take care of this. And the Lord told me to make sure I, 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 I look, the Lord told me to make sure I clean the church and nobody else. Okay. Is that what the Lord said? Okay. But then you become offended when no one says anything to you. Great job. No one says, hey, the restrooms are clean, are they? Well, yeah, they're supposed to be. Supposed to be? I clean? No, no, no. I'm not. You said the Lord told you that. So those are things you have to deal with. He tells his disciples, yeah, you've been following me, and you see me do the miracles, and you see me pray and broke bread and fish, and you see me heal people. He said, but I'm telling you right now, he said, unless you step up from just, unless you pull yourself out of your comfort zone, and seek me daily and seek me to the point that it's inconvenient for you. Seek me to a point where you have to adjust your schedule to me and not me adjust my schedule around you. A lot of times we'll adjust. <clears throat> Man, a lot of times we miss out on things the Lord wants to say to us is because we make God adjust to our schedule instead of us adjusting to God's schedule. There's things that God will want to speak to you at 2, 3, 4 in the morning. But you're like, Lord, you know I got to work. And you can talk to me on the way to work. And we miss out on so many things. And we miss out on so much revelation. And we miss out on, on so much gold that is given that could 
one word that can change our life forever. And we miss out on it because selfishness, laziness, or pride. Yeah. Oh, and I have that down there. That's, okay, these three things are what they call, what I call transformation blockers. You ever heard those, what they call about blockers? They call it uh, antihistamine blockers. It, it blocks your, your body from reacting to, you know, uh, your face swelling up and, and sneezing and allergic reaction. It, it, it blocks those things from happening. So there's something that block that, that block you from transformation. They block you from transforming. What is it? Well, one of them is, is, is selfishness. One is laziness. And the other one's pride. But I'll I'll get into some other things. We got we got we got a couple other blockers that's in there too. So this is what Jesus tells them. And in, in, in verse sixty, they say, "This is a hard thing to do, man. Who can do this?" And we get to a place where things are hard and difficult, or we do this. I never see it anywhere in the Bible where Jesus did it. So if Jesus didn't do it, I ain't doing it. And you know what? I'll give you Peter for an example, because nowhere. Did Peter see Jesus eat anything that was not kosher? But when Jesus, but when he had that vision, and he taught all the creepy things, all the four hoof things, all the certain things that was in that sheet, he said, "Rise, Peter, slay and eat." And Peter said, "I have never eaten anything common in my life. I, I pride myself, God, on being, you know, being a, 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 a Jew of Jews, a Hebrew of Hebrews, and I've never eaten anything like that." That is common. I don't touch things that are common. And God said, don't you call anything I've created common. And Jesus had to use Peter and his friends to show Cornelius the power of God. And he said, it is of a truth. God is no respecter of person. He had to see that revelation. He had to get the revelation. And here we go. Verse, 16, verse 61. But Jesus, knowing within himself that his disciples... This is, these are his disciples. These are these are not, not, these are not people who come to church every now and then. I want you to catch that. These are not people who you know. These are not priesters. What do you mean priesters? People who come on Christmas and Easter. These are not you know. This is not Mother's Day, Father's Day kind of thing. These, these are these are people who said I'm all in. Jesus, whatever you want. And when Jesus started talking, they said everything except that. What is he saying? This is they even said this is a hard saying. Man, this is difficult. He's talking about we gotta we gotta really commit to some things, man. I, I was okay with my volunteering here and there. I mean, I you know, I, I don't mind coming and, and singing here and there. But you're talking about prayer and, and seeking him for what songs to sing? Should we just go to YouTube and grab some stuff? No. He said, I want you to spend time with me because in your in your journey of spending time and seeking me on what songs to sing, you'll actually be enhancing your ability to hear from me clearly on other things that I have for you. Mm. And I don't want you to miss those. But it said in verse 61, it says, but Jesus knowing him within himself that his disciples were complaining and protesting and grumbling about it. He said to them, is this a, a stumbling block and an offense for you? Are you offended by this? He said, does this upset and displease and shock and scandalize you? So another form of transformation blockers, complaining, grumbling, and protesting. And the Spirit is speaking to you, and you still like, nah, I'm not, I'm not doing that. But that's okay, because you know what's going to happen? And it says, verse, six, verse 62, Jesus said this, What then will, will be your reaction if you should see the Son of Man ascending into a, to a place where he was before? It is the spirit who gives life. He's the life giver. The flesh conveys no benefits whatever. There is no profit in the flesh. There's no profit in your emotions. There's no profit in your opinions. There's no profit in anything if it's not lined up with the word of God. He said you have to be relied on the Holy Spirit. He's the life giver. He said the words that I have been speaking to you are true spirit and life. Verse 64. But some of you fail to believe and trust and have faith. Mm. Another transformation blocker. Failure to believe and failure to have faith. Jeez. Verse 65. 
And he said, that is why I told you that no one can come to me unless he has been granted, unless it is granted him, unless he is enabled to do so by the Father. We can't go to Christ except the Father already allows us to go. Meaning what? Meaning when you were born, there was something in you that was already missing. So you already met the qualifications to go to Christ. While we missed, we have this thing that's missing because of what Adam did in the garden. It was a relationship that was torn because of disobedience. And so everybody that was born after that was born with this missing part that only Christ can fill. And you're only going to go to Christ once you realize through that God, I'm missing something in my life. And so I'll come to Christ and he fulfills everything that I'm missing. Not only will he fulfill everything that I'm missing, he will, he will actually do above and beyond what I can ask or think. He will actually flow into things that I didn't even know I missed, that I'm missing. But this is where, this is where it turns. Verse 66. After Jesus said this, many of his disciples, many, I'll say this in the, in the New King James Version, it says this, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Amplified classic version says this, after this, many of his disciples drew back, returned to their old associations and no longer accompanied him. Okay, I'm going to read it like this. Transformation requires not returning to the old associates, whether it be people, places, wrong, pat wrong patterns of thinking, wrong patterns of believing, or voices from your past. If you plan on continuing transformation, you cannot return to your old way of life. For one, according to 1 Corinthians 5, 17, that life has been done away with. That life is no longer, it no longer exists. You actually, actually have to go root around and find it again. But it says for you to return to your old association, that means everything that, everything that was contrary to who Christ is, that's what they went back to. They went back to all of that. And therefore, transformation stopped. And then Jesus, being Jesus, he didn't sit there and say, oh, please come back. I was playing. I'll change if y'all change. I'll change this. I won't make it so hard for you. It's okay. You mad? It's all right. No. Jesus turns to his 12. Now, this is where it changes because that other disciples, 70 or more, was following as well. But now those left, and now all he has left are the 12. And Jesus didn't say, Oh my God, I lost all my people, all my followers, all of my members. I lost all my Twitter account. I lost all I lost everybody following me on Facebook. I lost everybody on Instagram. Oh my God, let me let me put a let me print a retraction. You know, he didn't do like celebrities. They say anything they want to say, and then when they come under attack or people start dropping them, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why I said that. Uh, that's not my character. That's not my demeanor. I don't know where that came from. You know where it came from. He, 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 all this stuff. Jesus didn't say that. Jesus said, You want to drop me too? And this is what took place. He said, you, will you also leave? Do you want to leave? Verse 68. I got to get this in. Verse 68. Simon Peter answered him and said, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. One translation says, you have the message of eternal life. Where else can I go to hear words that change my life? Where else can I go to have an encounter if you read over in Luke chapter 5, you'll see where Jesus walked over to Peter and he said, you know, how's the fishing going? And Peter's like, man, we've been out there all night and ain't caught nothing. And he says, cast your nets on the right side. Launch out in the deep and cast on the right side. Peter said, we've been fishing all night long, caught nothing, yet at your word. Words. Words are powerful. He said, yet at your word, I was tired. This was hard. This was difficult. This was uneasy. This is not for the faint of heart. Yet at your word, I'll go back to it and try it again. And that's where transformation is powerful. Because you've tried it, everything. You, you pushed. You, you, you've exhausted every, event, every attempt you've tried. Everything you could think of. You talked to your core of people. You talked to your inner circle. You talked to everybody and you kept trying and trying and it has failed. And you get to a place, you say, God, I, I just, I'm, I'm done. 
and, and he comes to you with a word and he says, go one more time. And you'll know if you've been transformed or not. Because if you've been transformed, you'll grab those nets, you'll throw them on that ship, you'll push back out and you'll jump back in the water and you'll go even deeper and you'll drop it just the way he told you to drop it on the right side of the ship. If you haven't been, that's the fine line. Because if he says go back one more time, you say, well, I, God, I'm tired. I, I, I can't do this no more. I'm done. Then we know that transformation has just stopped for you. If you wanted to keep going, it's got to be in the difficult times. Right. It's got to be in the rough seasons. It's got to be in the I don't want to do this. I don't feel like doing this anymore seasons. And that's okay. You don't feel like it. And that's okay. It's hard. And that's okay. This is, this is, this is hard to deal with. But you have to come to a revelation. Transformation requires a revelation of who Christ is. Peter says, where, to whom shall we go? Who are we going to go follow now? He said, you're the one that had the words of eternal life. Mm -hmm. And then he said these words to him after that. He said, I'm reading it. He said, also, we have come to believe and know you are the Christ, the son of the living God. One translation said, we know and are sure. Transformation calls for surety. Transformation calls for learning. Now he says we have some parts of it we have learned and now we know. You go from learning, transformation goes from, from being taught to learning, to believing, to knowing. That's where the knowledge is. They they went through from they we learned. That means we, you've been teaching us along the way. That means we, 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 we've heard the word, we, we've understood, now we believe, and now we know. It's not, I believe God's going to make a way, I know God's going to make a way. And not, I, I believe God's going to save my family, you go to where I know God's going to save my family. You don't go where I believe God's going to bless my business, you go to where I know God's going to bless my business. I believe I'm going to finish this book, no, I know I'm going to finish this book. You go from teaching to believing. To knowing, and that's the power of the Holy Spirit. It says this: Revelation require re transformation requires learning or being taught by the Holy Spirit into trusting God. Because Hosea four and six says it didn't say my people are destroyed for lack of faith. It didn't say my people are destroyed from lack of scriptures. It says my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. We're struggling with lack of knowledge. And so we get to a place where we get the knowledge of who Christ is. Don't reject it. Embrace it. Yeah, that's good. Don't reject him. Embrace him. Yeah, I know it was difficult. And I know you trusted him and believed that, he, that your, your grandma was not going to pass away, but she passed away. But please know he still has the words of eternal life for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I know you've been hurt in the relationship. And I know... That you, you thought by this time that you had gotten saved and now your kids are grown and you thought you'd establish a relationship with them, but because of the hurts that they have, they really haven't come to grips of really embracing you again. That's okay. Don't don't leave what you know in Christ to go run after what you don't know about something else. God is still working things out for your good. God is still working things out for your good. Transformation, let me read this part here. Transformation requires getting a personal revelation of who Jesus Christ is to you. Peter said, we know and are sure. And another translation, another uh, scripture, Jesus said, who do men say I am? And, Jesus, and, and it was revealed to him, re revealed to Peter by the Holy Spirit. He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And that's when Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my father in heaven. You have to, transformation is going to require that you have a personal revelation of who Jesus is. You won't know he's a healer until you need healing. You won't know he's a way maker until you need a way made. You believe he will, but you continue to flow in that and you'll sit there and you say, I know he will. I haven't seen it yet, but I know he will. Why? Because I've seen him do it for so many other people. I've seen him in his word and I know he will not forsake me. He will not leave me and I will not leave him because I am committed to this. There are days where you may go home with tears in your eyes from church. From church. I say it. And let me say this. 
and, and we, we got to wrap up. But let me say, a lot of times people say, well, I was hurt by church, and church hurt is the worst hurt. As long as people are in the earth, and as long as they're hurting people on this earth, people will be hurt. What do you mean? John Maxwell said hurting people hurt people. So you have hurting people at work, but you, you go to work. You have hurting people at college, but you're going to get that degree. You have hurting people at school, but you know what? You jump on the bus, and you don't allow that to stop you from getting what you need. Because you're like, regardless of what they say, I know what I need. Same holds true for the body of Christ. There may be some people who misunderstand. There may be some people who actually get hurt. There may be some people who actually hurt you purposely. A lot of times things are people are hurt or offended, not knowingly, but sometimes it may be just, you know they did it on purpose. But you're not going to, you're not seeking a, re, a, a relationship with Jesus based on them. Mm -hmm. you're, seeking a revela a, a, you're seeking the revelation of a relationship with Jesus based on you and him. That's all. And that's all God's requiring. He said, are you, are you going to be like the ones that walked away? Are you going to be like the 12 that said, you, you have the words of eternal life? I'm going to be like the one that say, I, I have no place else. I have no other place to go. You are my beginning and my ending. Everything that I have and everything that I'm to be, I owe it to you. I'm not going to allow my emotions. I'm not going to allow my feelings. I'm not going to allow, I mean, my, 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 my physical man. I'm not going to allow uh, my fears. I'm not going to allow any of that, my selfishness, my laziness, or my pride. I'm not going to allow any of that to stop me from pursuing you. I'm not going to allow failure to trust because I trust you. I'm not going to allow failure to believe because I believe you. Block me from my transformation. And don't you let it block you from yours. The enemy will use any tactic he can to cause your transformation to cease. Don't give him the satisfaction. God bless you. Glory to God. Glory to God. We just in that I say he, Jesus, is the life giver. He's a life giver. And I, you know, in this message, I I just believe you saw yourself in this message. And I ask you, uh, what is blocking you? If there's anything blocking you in transforming into God's uh the God kind of life for you, I say this to you. If you are a believer, if you're a believer, you're listening, and those things are blocked, you have things that's blocking you, that pride or what have you to transform into the things of God, I wouldn't tell you you have the power mm -hmm. to stop the blockage. Mm -hmm. You can decide today, I'm just going to go all in, God. Yeah. It doesn't feel good. Yeah. All the things that Pastor Tony just said, but you have the power to stop the blockage. Mm -hmm. If there's anyone here today, that need Jesus as a Lord and Savior. In this word, you saw, hey, I want to know Jesus as my personal Savior. Today is a day. You can ask him into your heart. I am a sinner. And it's not mm -hmm. so much, you know, I'm just a sinner. You think that's just something so bad. We all was born into sin mm -hmm. because of what um, Satan did in the garden. So we all was born into sin. Mm -hmm. And so those, um, the I say the fruit of it all, we can say, but now I want to know Jesus as my person. That's why he died. Yeah. For us to come to know God again. God loved us so much. Mm -hmm. He sent Jesus, knowing that we was out of, you know, was not in right standing with him. Yeah. And there was a gap there. So therefore he sent Jesus. That blood caused us like a bridge. That blood is like a bridge to come yeah. into God one more again. Yeah. Yeah. So if that's you, that was me before, mm -hmm. I need Jesus. And that's what you, if you want to accept, receive Jesus, your Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. today, yeah. just ask him into your heart. Mm -hmm. We have our prayer team here to want to pray with you and um, walk you through the journey here of life with Jesus. Yeah. Just go ahead and just raise your hand. They'll reach out to you. If you want to message um, privately to the uh, eWall page, you can do that. If you say, hey, I have received Jesus, my Lord and Savior, but I'm being honest. I saw myself in a the word. There, there's some blockage here. Mm -hmm. But I'm mm -hmm. going to decide today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I realized now I have the power to say, no, pride, you got to go. You know, even if I don't understand, you got to go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to believe what God's word says for my life. 
you just you just ded- rededicating yourself back. Yeah. You realize that yeah. hey, I have not been walking that in that intimate relationship with God. Mm-hmm. So now, Father, I decide today. Mm-hmm. And yeah. if you believe in God for a place to call home, as we said earlier, a place that you can oh, get Lord. fed and follow mm-hmm. this word of God. You yeah. said, but hey, I don't live in your city. It's okay. It's okay. It's you're, okay. You're a virtual member. A virtual member. It's okay. Mm-hmm. So if that's you, go ahead and just uh, say something. Open mm-hmm. your mouth. We said and to see something, you got to say something. There you so go. open your mouth right here through your mm-hmm. fingers and te- um, just uh, go ahead and put your hand up with the emojis mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. Uh, e- uh, message e wall. It's okay. So we would like to connect with you and walk you through uh, this life journey. And I just thank God for each and every one of you for connecting here today. Yes. And I do believe this word bless your hearts. And please visit our uh, EWAL page. EWAL page lets you know about our in-house services and all what's going on all the way up to the end of this year. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's good to see you guys here uh, live with us. And we're going to just close out. And we're going to just uh, speak over your lives today. Yeah. As we um, close out, Heavenly mm-hmm. Father, thank you for each one that's connected here today. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Whatever they believe thank in you, you for, whatever they saw you in this work for, the courage. Yes. I speak courage thank to you, their Lord. soul right now. Yes. To let just for them, Lord, to step out, yes. Lord God, and just call those blocks, whatever they are, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. They have the power to, Lord. Let them know they have yes. the power to. Yes, Lord. To walk in your will, Lord Jesus, for their lives. The devil is a liar. No longer will he have hold on their emotions, Lord Jesus. They will be bold to step into the things that you have for them. And to hear you clearly and be obedient to just that. Bless everything that's concerning them at this very moment, Father. Yes, Lord. Cover them, strengthen them, Lord Jesus. Even the tears, I see this falling right now, Father. Yes. Let them know this is you, Lord God, that have them. Glory to God. It's not so much whoever it is, not so much him drying your tears. You're supposed to pour out. That's what you're doing right now. You're just pouring out. You're releasing yes. in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes. Thank you, Lord. It is well, it is well. in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Have a great week on purpose. And remember, Jesus is is Lord, Lord, and it's about about where where you're going going, and not not where where you've been. been. This week, I say this to you. Give God, I I hear him speaking to Mm. somebody out there, give it one more try. Uh, Just give it one mm, more try. Trust him in the one more try. God bless you. We love y'all. Have a great week. Glory to God. Mm -mm Mm-mm-mm.